In this lesson, we're going to be going over how we can create a habit tracker in Python. And the program is going to look like this, where we can add and define our own habits, such as if you want to quit coffee or want to quit drinking beer or you bite your nails, you can insert it there, insert the date and time you started to quit it. Then we're going to also insert the amount of money it costs us per day and the amount of time it wastes to do this. So once we put all that information in and we can add as many of these as we want, we can go ahead and run the program and we're going to get a very nice table such as this one that's going to list the habits. It's going to list how many days it's been since we broke that habit and how many days until we reach our goal plus the total amount of time saved and the total amount of money saved. So these two fields here are quite motivational and the rest is just very good info for quitting habits. So the first thing we're going to do in an empty Python project is go ahead to the terminal and we have to install a few packages. So the first one we have to install is pip install pandas, which is a very popular package for handling large amounts of data but it has a lot of cool features that allow us to form our data in a very nice and readable way. Perfect. And as soon as that has installed, we have to go ahead and install another package, which is called tabulate. And this is going to allow us to make our table look beautiful. As you saw earlier, we were able to format it in the console so that it had a nice outline and it separated each field. We just want that effect for our program, but that's actually all we have to import. Now we can go ahead and right click on our main folder and we're going to create another Python file. And this one we're going to call habit underscore tool. And from here we need to import date time. So from date time, import date time. Then we're going to create our first function, which is called break habit. And it's going to take a habit name so we know what we are quitting. It's going to take a start date followed by a cost per day. And this can be in euros, dollars, whatever you want. And the minutes wasted. Now the first thing we're going to do is quite custom. So we're going to go ahead and create a comment that's called personal details. And right under this, we're going to go ahead and define a goal variable. And this is the total amount of days you want to try to break your habit with. So I put the default to be 60 because I thought after 60 days, you probably have overcome that habit. And we also need to go ahead and define an hourly wage so we can accurately represent how much money we are saving. So for myself, I valued my time at about 30 euros an hour. And you can put a comment of what currency you want to define this as. You're going to be able to edit this later. And now we have to go ahead and find out the total amount of time elapsed between the start date and right now. So I'm going to insert a comment here that says total time elapsed in seconds. And we will go ahead and type in time elapsed is equal to date time now, which gets the current date and time minus the start date. And out of all of this, we want to get the total seconds. And there's actually something very important that I want to mention right now. And that is at any point of this tutorial, if you don't know what something does or what something is, go ahead and create a print statement and just insert it inside there because it's not really clear what this gives when I just type it, of course. But if we go ahead and right click and run the program now, you're going to notice in the console that date time now gets the most current date in the form of this timestamp. So again, at any moment, if you don't know what something does, go ahead and print it. I'm going to try to demonstrate it to the best of my ability, but sometimes the best thing you can do, of course, is pause the video and just print the statement for yourself so you can learn to understand what things do. Because also when you finish this course, you're going to be looking at other videos or other lines of code on the internet, and you're going to have no idea what it does. So the print statement is the most valuable method for finding out what something does. But that was just a side note. Let's continue with the program. Now, of course, we need to convert the timestamp to both hours and days. So we're going to create a variable called hours, and then we're going to use a method that rounds the number that we get back to the float with the amount of decimal places we wanted to have, because the number we will get back is going to have an incredible amount of decimal spots, and we don't want to get 3.33333, we just want to get 3.3. So to do this, we're just going to go ahead and type in time elapsed divided by 60 
Now that's a minute divided by 60 again. Now it turns into an hour. So this just turns, of course, the seconds into hours. Then we should provide a comma. And here we get to specify how many decimal spots we want to appear when we round this number. So if you have two, it's going to have two decimal spots. If we keep one, it's just going to have one decimal place over there. And we're going to do something very similar for the days. So days is round hours divided by 24. And we want to have two decimal places there. Next, we're going to provide some random bonus details. And this is the money saved, the minute saved, and the total money saved. All of that very motivational information when you're trying to break a habit. So we're going to start with the money saved. And that's going to equal the cost per day times the days. So if we put that the cost per day is $3, then every day we're going to save $3. So two days is going to mean we saved $6. And that's how this works. Then we have minutes saved, which is going to round the days times the minutes wasted. So if we put 10 minutes here for each day that passes, we're going to save 10 minutes. And if it's two days, we're going to save 20 minutes. And finally, we need to go ahead and get the total money saved and convert it to the currency of our choice, of course. So here we're going to create a formatted string. And for me, I'm going to insert a euro. But of course, you can insert a dollar symbol if you want, or even the pound symbol. I'm going to stick with the euro. And inside here, we're going to open up some curly brackets. And we're going to round the result of the calculation that we will put inside here. So I'm going to get the money saved plus parentheses, the minutes saved divided by 60 times the hourly wage. And then we're going to add two decimal places there. And this section right here is going to be quite confusing the first time you type it. But just to explain it real quickly, we have the total minutes saved. So for example, let's pretend three days went by, we saved 30 minutes in total. These minutes saved are going to be divided by 60 because we want to convert it into an hour. So 0.5 times the hourly wage is going to give us 15 euros in my example. Plus, of course, the total money saved, which happens anyway. So that's how we get our special algorithm for total money saved. Now, we also have to specify the days to go. So here we will type in days to go. And that's going to equal round goal minus the days. And we're almost done with this function. Now we just have to go ahead and make sure that if it's more than 72 hours, we change hours to days because we don't want to display hours all the time. We also want to change it to days as time progresses. As you saw in the earlier example right here, if it's under 72 hours, we're going to have it written in hours. Otherwise, if it's more than 72 hours, we're going to have it written in days. So that's actually what we have to create inside here now. And to do that, we're just going to go ahead and type in if hours is more than 72, then we're going to go ahead and reassign this hours variable with the string of days plus days. Else we want to go ahead and assign to our hours the string of hours plus hours. And of course, the last thing to do here is to return the info that we want. So inside here, we're going to create a return statement and a dictionary. And the first thing we want to return is the habit that we want to return. And that is the habit name, followed by the time since, which is going to be stored as hours. Then we also will create a key called days remaining. And that's going to equal days to go, followed by minutes saved with the minutes saved inside. And finally, we want to know how much money we saved. So money underscore saved, and that's going to equal total money saved. Now, of course, something really good would be to actually test this function. So right below, we're going to go ahead and call this break habit function. We're going to say coffee, for example, then we need to go ahead and provide a date. So we're going to type in date time. And inside here, we're in the year of 2021, the seventh month, which is July. We're going to say we quit it on the 20th at 10 o'clock in the morning with 20 minutes. And as you can see, Python gives you suggestions in case you get confused of which numbers go where. We had year, month, day, hour, and minutes. And you can even insert seconds and microseconds, although I find that quite irrelevant for this example. Then we want to say that the cost per day is about two euros because you have to buy the coffee. And also the minutes wasted 
is going to be set to 15 minutes per day because of course you have to wake up, you have to make the coffee and you have to drink the coffee. So that's all time wasted. Of course you can enjoy coffee. In my personal experience, I wasted a lot of time with coffee. So that is an accurate representation for myself. And of course it's not going to give us anything because it returns something but it does not print anything. So we need to surround everything by parentheses and print this. So you're going to notice it's going to give us this response. It's going to say the habit is of coffee. The time since is set to 10.03 days. Days remaining 50, minutes saved 150 and money saved is set at 95 euros. So of course this is a combination of time saved and the actual money saved. But now that we have this foundation, we've created the algorithm that can calculate our habits. Now we can go and make this very pretty in our main.py file. Of course, to save some time, you can copy the habit you just created and take it to main.py. Now here we're going to have to go and import from date time, import date time. Then we need to go ahead and import from habit tool. We want to import break habits and we want to import pandas as PD, which is the most popular naming convention for pandas. It's always going to be PD. And then from tabulate, we are going to import tabulate. Now, since this returns a dictionary, we want to create an array or a list of these items. So habits is going to equal angle brackets. And inside here, we will place our habits. So this is our first habit. And now we have to go ahead and create something that's called a data frame. So to do that, we will type in DF and we're going to refer to pandas data frame. And inside here, we can insert our habits. Then we can go ahead and print this data frame so you can understand what that is. So if we run the main file, we're going to get back a list just as we had earlier, except it doesn't look that pretty. That's why we're going to use tabulate later. But I'm going to go ahead and add my other habits to this so we have a few more examples. And just remember to add a comma in between each one of these at the end of the line. So if we rerun the program, we're going to have a table just like this one. And that's just what the data frame does. It puts it in a readable fashion. And one day if you work with data science, this is going to become something that's very familiar to you. But now we can go ahead and print tabulate and inside here we need to insert the data frame and for the headers we're just going to take the keys which are the key names of the response we get from break habits and we need to provide a table format which is going to be PSQL. Now when we run the program we're going to get this very fancy looking table that cleans our data and as you can see we have a fully functional habit tracker which we can use to break our habits and actually see how much money we saved and how much time we saved doing that. But with that being said, that concludes this lesson of the habit tracker and I will see you guys in the next lesson.